In this video, I'm breaking down what puppy socialization is according to science. As always, all of my resources and citations are linked in the description box. Make sure you check those out. Puppy socialization is the exposure to people, dogs, and other animals. Whereas, habituation is the exposure to other stimuli and events that occur in the world. Now, you're probably gonna hear habituation get thrown in with socialization all the time. That's reasonably normal. Like that's, and even you'll probably hear me say it throughout the rest of the video. So just think of socialization as the exposure to the universe and absorbing understanding of the universe. And it's critical that this exposure and this understanding of what the world really looks like and means and how to interact with it occurs in the dog's life between the time that they're born and the time between 12 and 18 weeks. Now, 12 to 18 week period is highly dependent on the dog's breed. So for the purpose of this video, we're gonna average it out at 16 weeks. And that's probably why you've heard the average of 16 weeks being this magnificent period, okay? So basically, from the time the dog is born to about 16 weeks, you have this prime opportunity to give your dog exposure to sounds, to scents, to textures, to people, to dogs, etc. It's not that your dog can't become exposed to those things past that point. And it's not that even that your dog can't learn about those things past 16 weeks. It's just that it becomes way, 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 way harder. Because when they're that young, their brains are absorbing information like you wouldn't freaking believe. You know, when, when humans, the first seven years of our life is like the most critical learning opportunities for us. It's the most influential on who we're going to be, our identities moving forward. The same is true for dogs. It just happens to be about 16 weeks instead of seven years. It is critical that we are giving our dogs prime opportunities of how to interact with the world. And in this video, I really wanna break down what the science says the most effective exposure looks like and what you need to be implementing for your young puppy at home. Let's get into it. What's up guys, it's Jen with Dog Liaison where I coach you on how to enhance your dog's mental health. I am a professional dog trainer and at this point in my career, I exclusively work with dogs facing anxiety related disorders. So dogs in my recovering rover program have not had healthy interactions with their triggers and that causes them anxiety. Of course, anxiety is highly correlated to genetics and also, it is highly correlated to improper socialization in the first critical sensitive periods of the dog's life. A sensitive period is a point in the maturing process when events are susceptible to leaving long-term effects or a period when learning is easier and knowledge gained is stored in the long-term memory. During the sensitive period, a small number of determining experiences have major effects or damages on future behavior. And so what we know is that if a dog doesn't get these sensitive opportunities, these enriching positive associations in these early sensitive periods that I'm going to cover today, then they are more likely to experience anxiety, fear, behavioral problems, lunging, barking, aggression, whatever, later in their life. The socialization period is broken down into three periods, three phases, okay? The first phase is called the primary period, and that goes from the time the puppy is born two, three weeks old. And in this period, the puppy is heavily reliant on mom because either their eyes aren't open, their senses are not fully at their capacity in this period, right? And so they're relying a lot on tactile, on what they can feel. And their mother is helping guide them through that feeling. Now imagine if a puppy does not have their mother in this period. What do you imagine the effects of that trauma will be on that puppy as an adult? So if you already know that your puppy did not have a reliable or even present mother, like dog mother, I don't mean human mother, at this stage, then you need to recognize right now that this deck is already set against you and you must not necessarily work overtime, but be that much more observant of your dog. Because already, my friend, you are unfortunately at a disadvantage. So this primary period, the dogs are learning about the world via their mother in many ways. The second phase is called the socialization period. And this period exists between the week three and week 12. So between weeks three and week 12, the elephant in the room is that at eight weeks is when puppies tend to leave their breeders and go to live with their forever home. Now here's what I propose. The three week to the 12 week mark is such a critical period for the dog to understand sociable interactions 
with other people and other dogs. They are fostering deep relationships. I'm just going to suggest that if you want to build a deep relationship with your dog and you really want them to understand the dynamics of the family household, perhaps adding in an extra week or two in that period is beneficial. So there is an argument to be made that instead of waiting till week eight, wherein you only give yourself four weeks to really tap into that critical period of fostering a deep relationship with your dog, having your dog learn about the other dogs in the household and foster a relationship with them. You could optimize that period by having the puppy go home at seven weeks or six weeks. And oh my God, I know, I hear the breeders yelling in the comments already. I hear them, I know they're there. I know I've just really caused an uproar with the statement. I'm just merely suggesting. This is especially true if you know that the puppy, the litter that the puppy is in is small or God forbid they're the only puppy in the litter at all. Because if they are in this critical learning period between three and eight weeks or nine weeks or 10 weeks, whenever the puppy goes home to the family, if they're in this critical learning period and they're not interacting with other dogs because they're just not that many other puppies in the household or in that litter, or they're the only puppy in the litter, they're not getting the interaction with the different dog personalities. Wouldn't it be more beneficial then for the dog to go with the families where they're gonna live to foster those deep relationships? Oh my God, I know this is a hot take by Jenna. I apologize in advance. Tell me in the comments how this is sitting with you guys. I'd love to hear. I'm just merely suggesting, okay? We're just chatting. But here's the thing. When we look at the science, we know that the weeks three to 12 are so important for our dogs to interact with humans, with other animals, with other dogs. You're probably gonna hear Dr. Ian Dunbar, who is a saint in the positive reinforcement world, don't get me wrong, but you're probably gonna hear him say, 100 people in 100 days. I can tell you, the more millennial trainers of the universe become very stressed when we hear that. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Because when we hear that, we're like, it depends. We need context around that. Some puppies will do great with 100 people in 100 days, right, with that rule. But many dogs, many puppies would have a lot of problems because it's more about the quality than the quantity. In this period, it's really more about what is the quality exposure rather than what is the quantity of the exposure. What is the dog learning in that experience? Not necessarily how many experiences is the dog having. Okay. So there was actually a study done in 2004 where researchers took two groups of similarly aged dogs. So they were puppies. They were all ranging at least 20 weeks of age or from birth to 20 weeks. And they called this a complex socialization program. Okay. The complex socialization program included toys. There was a minimum of five. They were rotated. They all have different textures. We have wood, we have nylabone, we have different shapes, rubber, plastic, hanging toys. Some made noises, some didn't. They were exposed to different surfaces. So they were exposed to concrete, rubber matting, wire flush flooring, vet bed, wood, cardboard, all sorts of different textures. They were exposed to different sounds and they were given Blue Cross sounds and familiar tape, including sounds like children playing doorbells and airplanes and traffic, right? They were exposed to different people, at least five different people on a regular basis who all wore different clothing. So it's not just a matter about the people. Again, we're talking about quality of the people. What is the quality of those interactions? If you have 10 interactions with effectively all the same type of person, is that really giving your dog socialization, right? Um, and giving them different experiences. And at the end of the study, when they compared the dogs who went through this complex socialization training program versus the dogs who were not as intense or given as much exposure, what they found is that dogs exposed to an intensive socialization training and habituation program, which was carried out in a more enriched and more varied environment, displayed less nervous behavior than dogs receiving a limited program. So there is absolutely benefit to making sure that your dog is exposed to different things, not necessarily many things. The third stage is considered the enrichment stage. And this stage goes from 12 weeks 
to sexual maturity. Now, you'll notice that they kind of just skipped over the whole 16 week thing, right? And that's because it starts off as more and more critical and then as it gets further and further into the dog's life, the effectiveness of those events, so the effectiveness of those sensitive periods becomes less and less, right? So as it extends out, the likelihood that your dog is going to have a single event learning experience goes down, okay? But the early in the life, 12, 13, 14 week stage, the more likely it is that those single event is going to cause real problems. And in this stage, puppies are really examining the differences between safe and dangerous. They're actually making more calculated decisions. Even at like 13 weeks, 14 weeks, you'll really start seeing them observe and make decisions. And this is actually one of my favorite things to observe. I love watching the dogs calculate. And I really encourage you to do this with your puppy at home if they're in this period, because you want to see, are they coming to the right conclusions? Because you could have a dog who observes. You could have a dog who looks, you could have a dog who studies, but if it's not leading to a calculated decision that is safe and reasonable, we need to reassess. That's where learning comes into play. That's where training comes into play. Something that we need to understand is that training in this period is more about making sure that the dog is making decisions and not necessarily about is the dog learning sit down, stay. You might be teaching sit down, stay in this stage, you might be teaching the dog come in this stage, and that's great, but the skill is really just a means to teach problem solving. Teaching recall is really just a means to instill safety measures in your dog's calculations. That's the purpose of recall, right? It's not so that the dog comes as soon as you say, so that the dog can assess decisions and go, I think it's safer that I run to mom than I run out into the middle of the street. <laughs> that's decision making right? That's how you want to be tackling your obedience training in this juvenile enrichment stage. Something that needs to be addressed though is that as your dog gets to that sexual maturity, whether that is at the six month mark, the year mark, the two year mark, as your dog hits that sexual maturity, there is going to be an additional change. And this change in their behavior is deeply rooted in whatever their breed hardwiring says to do. You must appreciate that. You must appreciate that as the dog becomes sexually mature and less juvenile in nature, their preferences will change and their preferences are gonna be heavily influenced by what their breed says. So for example, a nature dog, an Akita, a Husky, they are going to be more independent and probably more you know, strong-willed. They're gonna have their decision and then that's what it's gonna be. I either like you or I don't like you. So we really wanna think about at this stage, if you're seeing a behavioral change at and around sexual maturity, is it making sense per the dog's breed? Now, this is one of the reasons why if you have a mix right now, even if it's a puppy, I really recommend you get a DNA test, really recommend it, because it's going to help you understand what that hard wiring in your dog is telling him to do, is compelling him to do. And of course, if you're looking for a deeper dive on this conversation, you can watch this video, this interview that I did with Kim Brophy, who's an applied ethologist, and she does a really great job of breaking down what is happening at that sexual maturity transformation from a hard wiring cognitive state. Now, if you're really looking to get started on your puppy's basic skills, you wanna teach sit, you wanna teach touch, you wanna teach calm, you wanna teach not jumping on strangers, this compilation video right here is your next go-to. It's also linked in the description box. If you enjoy this video, make sure you hit like, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you get notified when we drop a new video. And I'll see you guys in the next video.